Hello, everybody. Welcome to Let's Try. My name is Retromation. This is Godless, a roguelike turn-based strategy auto-battler that I'm very excited to be checking out here today. This is the first of a few published games coming out by Brace Yourself Games, maybe best known for Crypt of the Necrodancer, developed and published by them. Uh, so I'm excited. They have good taste, and I imagine that they picked up a good game here. So I'm excited to give it a go. In we are to Godless, out now on Steam. Led by their champions, the mortal races defeated the gods, except for you. Burn down the continents to bring extinction to humankind. Oh. Well then. So our job is to extinct humankind? All right, I was not anticipating that, but hey, let's do it. Kingdoms of the First Alliance. Okay. Enemy waves. I mean, I think we'll just pop on in here. I assume you're gonna give me a tutorial. All right, defend the shrine and defeat three waves of enemies to win. All units act on their own and cannot be controlled directly, but you can see their intentions by pressing left control. Place my shrine. Okay, I mean, are these the enemies or are they my allies? Okay, I mean, hell? On enter, if the entered unit is an ally, you get a mana, works once, cannot be traversed. I mean, I don't... I'll put it here, I guess. I'm not entirely sure what we're going to do. Using skills consumes mana, so you get one each turn. Okay. On move... Okay, so this is a unit, a cleric, a swordsman. Click the right mouse button to inspect a tooltip. Hover over to learn more. Uh, so on attack... Deals double damage if the target is weaker, meaning they have less attack. Gotcha. So, I don't think... Eh, I guess maybe it will be weaker. Yeah, you do have less attack. So, do you have anything else going on with you? It seems like... Maybe not. At future levels, you get different abilities. Interesting, the enemies will level up if we don't get to kill them in time. Seems to be the case. Every turn, add two attack to an ally on this tile. I can't help but notice he has lots of health, though. Right? Yeah, he has lots of health. So I'm going to pop down this training camp and a swordsman who will be buffed up and does bonus damage if, you know, they are stronger than the other. Interesting, interesting. So we can end this here. I'm assuming they will get to do their move, like, by one. On enter, we got that mana, and then we got attacked. And we don't attack back. Okay. Gotcha. Well, that's going to be a little bit rough then. And since they moved... Oh, the ally has to be on the tile. Okay, well. I'm hoping that happens beforehand. So this is going to do theoretically 12 damage. So I will just say, sure. Drop that down. And hope that uh, it goes first. Up to 8. Hopefully. So we do go up to 8 first. And then we attack. We do attack for 12. Which is nice. We lose ourselves, but that's okay. So we only have one mana here. On move adds one health to all adjacent tiles. Uh, so you intend to move. Move, move. You know, I don't love that. So we only have one mana. We could potentially... Yeah, that first summon in hindsight is a bit of a waste there, but hey, live and learn. The cleric, we could put it down here. It could go up to three damage. But three damage with four health is not really something that I'm that excited about. I think I'm actually just going to end turn. Okay. So we will automatically attack something that we are we are close to, it seems. Order one, order two. So they actually might get to attack me, which is certainly annoying. So maybe, what happens if, if I summon something right here so that they can't do that? What, what's the plan then? 
can I effectively bait the attack out? They also might be just going for my uh, my shrine, for all I'm aware. Which would be certainly annoying. Let's hit it with a... Uh, let's hit it with this. Let's just... I feel like we'll be all right, yeah? So we move first. We get the extra HP, which is really nice, which means we shouldn't die here. And they went for this anyways. Annoying, but hey, what are you going to do? So why did we heal? Is that like a passive that we get? Two attack an ally on this side. Forest. Okay, so forest passive. Adds two health to a unit on this tile. Okay. And it just straight up adds it. Okay. It's not like... Um, I will go for another one of these. Sure. It doesn't seem like it heals. It doesn't seem like we have a maximum or anything. This should do a good amount of damage. Hopefully we like move and then let this guy go. But we're not so lucky. Obviously, if I had the ability to control, I would have went move, attack, move, attack. But hey, can't always do what you want. So we go first. We definitely get the kill, and then we get a setup for next time. I think I'm going to wait and get another uh, another one of these. This guy's getting beefy. So we have the next wave coming out. I'm hoping that this damage is not permanent on this, and I can only assume it's not. Adjusting this battle speed makes everything move slower or faster. So these are level two. Which means they get their seven attack and 21 HP. Level three, they get a, a brand new ability to them, which is interesting. I do love the variability that we have over our uh, speed there. Okay, good. We're all moving within the, the forest still. That is ideal. This is so much better. Okay, you're moving up. You're moving up. You know what? Let's drop down here. Each turn deals three damage to a unit on this tile. Like, I don't love it, but I do just want you here to increase these guys' uh, HP. So maybe we can handle it, or maybe we do it, like, right here. Because you will probably... Yeah, you're going to move down. Good. Holy moly. These forests? They're doing work? On move, good. Alright, so we do, we're going to be doing 16. Oh, it's the plan. So you are going to just, you're going to exchange attacks. Then you'll move and you'll exchange attacks, but first it's going to be one attack, two attack, which should be a kill, because we have more damage than they do. That's the passive of this swordsman. Gotcha. And then after that, third is you moving where? Here. Sure. Let's just increase the attack. That We're standing on something that doesn't have any, uh, any passives to it anyways. So we might as well boost ourselves there. Go up for the 20 damage. Good. It's not going to make a difference this turn, but it might next turn. You dummy! You're gonna be taking damage there. Alright, so that's gonna increase again. I guess I could, um... Put down this to sort of save them from themselves. Again, I, I don't know if I really should be spending all this mana right now or conserving it. Like, I feel like we've got a good squad, though, yeah? Up to 12? That's gonna be doing... You're gonna be doing 24 freaking damage. Alright. Enemy wave level up, so now they've got a little bit more. Enemies level up after each wave. Yep. On certain levels, they acquire new abilities. Consider them when setting up your strategy. This is... I'm very excited about this. On move deals five damage to all adjacent enemies. Uh, I, I'm loving the fact that we are going to be doing 14, 15, 
we should we should kill you before you do anything. So that's the good news. The bad news is we don't have a good answer for you. What's your passive? On attack, teleports to the shrine. Oh. Really, really don't like that. I almost feel like I want to buff this one up to... Because you're going to be defending the shrine. We need you to be doing like 20 damage. Because I might get lucky and get uh, one damage from the cleric. And then you're moving here, so you're taking the three anyways. So this should be okay. These should move here, kill this, and then we should be able to be okay back up here. Yeah, the fact that it has, like, the auto-battler element makes it a lot more manageable to have lots of units without turns taking, like, 12 years, which is an element that I'm actually really appreciating right now. Obviously, there's the element of whenever you introduce auto-battler where you're like, oh, I wouldn't have done that. I wouldn't have done that. But I think it can be fun to sort of try and implement around. See, like, right there, I, I managed this character up to 10 attack because I kind of assumed... This was going to be the outcome here. We do attack first. We are going to get the kill. We do 10 damage, double the 20, because we have more attack. Not so bad. This should, this should theoretically be the end of it. You guys are all going to do whatever the hell you do. And then we kill. We could have even uh, put down another tower here to buff that damage up. Interesting. So what kind of... What do rewards look like for this? It looks like... Um, we might get different units. You got a new skill that can summon a unit. Click any slot and pick the acquired skill to use it in the next battle. Orc Warlord. This is a lot of different uh, slots there. That's appealing. On attack, add this unit's attack to all adjacent allies. Oh, interesting. Get drag and drop. Do we have to click these? No. Okay. Don't know what all those currencies up there are for. Forge. Let's find that. The Sunless Forge is the only place able to sustain the sparks of creation. Here you can merge them into gems. You need two sparks to craft a gem. Here's your welcome present, a couple of fire sparks. Now select the sparks to start merging. So two of them merge into this. I have no idea what this does still, but I have a feeling it will tell me right now. Click here to see your crafted gem. Drag the gem to any slot to enchant it. Oh, it's a pa- Oh my god. Okay, so it's a passive that can be used on any unit. Oh, this just made me like five times more interested. On attack, attacks an extra time, but receives four damage. That's an orc warlord joint right there. Now, any unit that you put that on- Wait, that you put into the enchanted slot will have this skill. So yeah, they'll attack uh, twice- which, wait. On attack, attacks an extra time. So this is only four damage taken, right? It's not eight damage taken. It doesn't apply four damage on every attack, right? Otherwise, I would say it's worded strange. Because now he'll, uh, he'll add two attack to everybody around him twice. Take four damage, go down to one, which is not great. But, um... I don't know, if we put him in a forest or something, we might be able to get that effect out of him twice. That could be kind of interesting. Recreate the continent. Interesting. No. Right? Yeah. I like the shrine here. So you're moving there. I'm trying to think if I want to bother trying to put you into a forest twice.
feels dumb. Can this buff enemies? No, good. Oh boy. Obviously there's an interesting idea to going Warlord with this. I have the fear that we die this this turn though, because do you you go here and then you move? Because we move before they do, don't we? Oh, that's that's really actually rough. Since that's the case, I actually think I end turn first. As weird as it sort of is, because otherwise we would move and then they would move and attack us, which is suboptimal, to say the least. Um, so you got five. We can do swordsmen. We can buff you up that way. Be up to eight. You'll be doing 16. Can't take that big of a smacking. Then again, nobody here really can. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to move you right there, knowing full well... Full well that I royally beefed it. Actually, have I? Because if I can get health twice, then we're in an okay spot. Yeah, no, I beefed it. That's not... I thought that we could still move down and get it. Not... Just not good. We can take the hit, which was the ideal thing we wanted. But I thought that they would maybe move. But no. Okay. So we have a couple options here. I think the best one is just to stand still. Knowing full well you're going to die here on that. That's okay. So we kill you here. The annoying thing is I can't get the Orc Warlord in here and then have them buff up you, can I? May maybe I can. You're going to be slower, aren't you? Yes. Good. That's the ideal then. They might even stand still, which... That'd be better. We want them to stand... We wanted them to stand still. Dude, come on! Alright, um... So if I drop the... If I drop a cleric there, I could do it as bait and just have them just get killed. And then you will probably move... Who moves first? You move first, then you move. Perfect. That works. That works. Sorry, sacrificial lamb. This is so that I can get the big funny buff. Look. Oh! Whoa! Wombo combo. That is so... Look at that. 16 damage now all of a sudden. That was the, that was the plan. That was the dream. So the issue is, like, you, you do only have 12 health, and that is still pretty... That's pretty weak. What? Why? Why are you going here? That makes no sense. That makes actually zero sense why you would go there. Um... Well, I hope this one's smart then, because that's kind of all I can rely on. Great. Like, and you're, you're moving to this tile to take damage. What? Yeah, you what? Okay. All right, so there's a bug. Good. Bad and good at the same time. Good because this that was a much better move. Bad because you don't really want to have that kind of inconsistency. Uh, we're going to be taking a hit here. And we're going to be dying here. Interesting.
yeah, no matter where you go, that's just going to be bad. This guy's pretty much... Pretty much donezo. Right? You're moving in. You're going to be taking the damage and dying. And even if you weren't, even if you were not taking that damage and dying, you would be taking this hit and dying. So there's no point in trying to save this guy at this point. He did what he needed to do, which was to add 8 damage to this guy right here. So, so with that in mind, I'm kind of thinking... Like, just putting down a cleric to try and buff up this person to live longer is a better call. Oh, wait. We won't take the 3 damage this turn either. So it's like... I guess it's kind of nice. Because we get that 3... We get smacked, we die, like, that was just... Wait, you have this passive already? Wait, 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 wait. I thought that was on turn three. They started at level two. Well, well, well. Well, well, well. Okay. In that case, we have to do this then. All right. I had not considered that they might start at level two for this map. That's a clever way of doing it. Um, I am going to take stupid damage here, stupid damage there. But we need to do this to obviously defend our, uh, our base a bit. No! Wait, that gave them just enough health to live? You! Gotta be kidding me! It's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Uh, we could either take three damage or we could buff ourselves up. And avoid the damage, which seems a little bit more appealing to me right now. Man, that was so unlucky. I guess we need to consider the force location around ourselves in an offensive uh, perspective as well. Okay. They are going to be teleporting home. Immediately. We're gonna we're gonna absolutely pop one. The other one's gonna teleport back. In which we can then theoretically get a kill. We should be fine. Unless Unless we kill this one. Good. That's the ideal. This one's gonna hit probably you, kill you, that's fine. Hardly a concern. And then the 16 double skill that. Good. All right, fine. We're A-OK. -okay. Don't like that buff up, though. Have an Orc Warlord for the fun of it. Good, 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 good. What does this do? Use it to learn fire talents in the chamber. Oh? Oh? Broken Island boss. Did we get a chamber right beforehand? Merchant. The dimensional merchant has been trading with divine beings for centuries. Give him ether and he'll give you anything. Stop. Skills. Unlock more slots in the library. I mean, I'm pretty pleased with what I've got, I guess. Scrolls are powerful one-time skills you can use in battle, and they don't consume any mana. I think a scroll is going to be the way to go for me. You know what? Let's just, let's just get all those for now, because I don't want to add a new unit, though I do want to see what these all are. Uh, Overgrown Ruins adds one health to an ally on this tile, Growth. Triggered an additional time for every adjacent unit or tile with Growth. Nomad every turn gets plus two, plus two to this unit if they're on a plain hex. Curious. Beast passive when this unit receives damage, add the same amount of attack to them. Oh, that's fun. Orc Shaman, every turn, all adjacent allies attack enemies immediately if possible. Okay. 
Okay. That seems potentially good, depending on some logistics of it. Swap the attack of two units. Could be... Oh! Wait, 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 wait. There's some dumb... There's some dumb potential there. For, like, swordsman. Buff up a swordsman like crazy. Uh, and then swap the attack onto a new orc warlord who attacks twice and buffs up everybody around them with the attack of the swordsman twice. Like, there's some really interesting wombo combos that are very much reminding me of kind of like um, auto chess style games or kind of like new wave auto battles like a Hearthstone Battlegrounds or a Storybook Brawl, like that that kind of thing. Reminding me of the, the type of synergies and plays that you would make in those for sure. On attack, triggers each turn effects of all adjacent tiles and alleys. Yeah, like this, totally. Triggers each turn effects of all adjacent tiles and allies. On move, on attack. Yeah, there's some really fun stuff. Part of me wants to grab something for uh, for the hell of it then. But I'm trying to figure out what's really like that synergistic with us right now. Orc Shaman is tempting. Like, Unholy Spell is the only thing that I'm thinking could be good. It's three mana? No. Thanks, but no. Thanks for the offer. I'm glad to see it exists. Uh, the first and only negotiation between the gods and mortals took place here. Common Wisdom holds that the land was whole before that. Talvius. Damages the shrine with basic attacks from any distance. Don't love that. Really don't love that. So do you start out, or do you... Are you going to be wave three? Undefeated knight. Yeah, you, you start out. On enter, if the entered unit is Talvius, add four attack to him. No way, man. We got to build on those. On attack launches a six, a projectile doing six damage to the shrine. I actually, I don't like that. On attack grants six health to this unit if the target is weaker. So we have to have a strong unit by then. On attack launches a projectile doing six damage to your shrine. I, yeah, I don't like the fact that we have a ticking timer of guaranteed damage. I'll be very curious. I'm going to say no to recreating the continent. Shrine. I kind of just want to delete tiles like these, I guess. Oh boy. Nope, not the cleric. Swordsman. We need to get you to be, uh... We need to buff you twice. So I'm hoping you move... Here. Nah, that be too convenient, eh? Oh, great. They immediately walked onto that tile that there they knew. Not the War Graveyard. Talvis, please. There we go. On attack, launches a projectile. On attack, grants six health to this unit if the target is weaker. Yeah, that is just bad news, man. Why can't I um, cast a spell? Might I ask? Oh, I can. It's just wrong. So I'm going to get hit and and die. I am going to get hit and die. How do you do this one? What the hell? I guess we needed to set up here and just ignore these, but then 
and we needed to hope that he wasn't going to step on a war graveyard, I guess, but it can't just be hope. If I buff you up to 10, it's not going to matter. It's not going to change literally anything here. Uh, yeah, no, there, there's no good answer here. Everybody, uh, uh, I need a very strong damage unit. Like, resurrecting him is going to be maybe the best bet, so I guess... Yeah, I knew I... I knew that was wrong. Okay. I guess we do this under the... Wait! He does that even if he doesn't attack? The shrine isn't a tile. The shrine is a unit. What? Why is the shrine a unit and not a tile? What? Oh my god. We're dead then. I have to do this. I didn't know that the shrine... I thought that the shrine, the, the shrine completely overtook the tile. It does not. So we actually should be probably building the shrine on a forest under the the new realization that the shrine is actually a unit for some reason. Did not know. That is news. So this is not going to be good. I can resurrect you here. You'll go up to do a little bit more damage. Yeah, we're just not. He doesn't keep his stats. What is this? Why would I? <laughs> Come on. Is this supposed to be a guaranteed death? I feel like this is supposed to be a guaranteed death. Six damage per turn across the map, no matter what, I think is supposed to be a guaranteed death. With a 100 health enemy doing 12 damage at a base, I think this is a guaranteed death tutorial situation. If so, screw that. Uh, I shall Thunderbolt you for kicks and wiggles. And I guess we just have to do this. Like, I know that giving him something to attack means that he'll get to kill my base, but if I don't give him something to attack, he gets to kill my base anyways. So there's really no actual uh, answer here. So we're going to go up to eight. We're going to do eight damage to him, which is fun. And that does get... That gets attack power. Yeah, that's fine. That is A-OK. -okay. Get experience as a reward after each match. Purchase useful goods for each, for experience in the library. Oh, even worse. It's Metaprog! I don't know if it's a tutorial or Metaprog, but we'll find out. All right, back to the menu, to the library. Visit the library to unlock some boons. Click on the lock to obtain these books. Okay. Let's upgrade one of the C's boons to get its benefits. Perform powerful rituals mid-battle to crush enemies and aid allies. Okay, so you can literally just increase your shrine's health up to 60. I am curious what a ritual is, but there we go. I guess we just have, yeah, we just have 55 health now instead. Uh, defeat any boss with at least 100 health left. Adds plus three, plus three to all allies every eight turns. There's more unlocks over there. Start a run with 50 bucks. Adds 40 of the Shrine's health after defeating boss. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it was a mix. We'll, we'll have to see. We will see. Marker, effect, items. Okay, so we got a bunch of stuff that we uh, have to unlock. Easy, normal. Act. Oh, that's interesting. I like that idea. The fact that you can have Act 1 and Act 2 be on different difficulties. 
That's kind of neat. So you could be like, hey, you know what? I want I want more rewards right away. Normally it's too too easy, too breezy. All right, I want to go on in here because I want to see uh, how much has changed. What's really different? Choose three. Okay, so we get to choose three skills. This I I like this idea. Uh, on attack, if the target has zero attack, it deals triple damage and adds twenty ether. I don't know how usable that is. Every turn adds plus two, plus two to this unit if they're on a plane hex. I'll just do it because it's new. Corrupted tree steals one attack when attacked. Attack is always equal to the health. Um, I like the idea of it. They cost three. Cost three to cast. I guess I'll go with the tree. On attack, pushes target on every second attack. We don't really have a good way of getting lots of damage, but Nomad is not good with training camp. Uh... Yeah, I don't, I don't I don't really love the synergies we've got going on, but training camp uh corrupted tree is not the worst. Furious brutes is interesting. Well, if I could get Furious Brute training camp, I would kind of like that. Okay, Kingdoms of the First Alliance. Sure, pop on in. Okay, so there's going to be a level 1 right out the get-go. And apparently we do get the benefits of this, so we do want to take it. In the past, I wanted to do the opposite, because I was like, well, I don't want to overwrite it with my with this tile. Yeah, okay. Well, obviously you would want it on, uh, on something like a forest then. With that in mind. All right, Nomad. I'm trusting you to... Uh... Okay. Turn out I did not press the space. Trust in you. You're going to move on to there. Interesting. Bold choice. Deciding to uh, just die. Bold choice indeed. I'm kind of thinking um, Corrupted Tree. Slap them on, on this. So they should get 5 HP, they're going to move on to the swamp, and then uh, and then this guy's going to come down and kill them. <laughs> interesting, interesting, interesting. Love it, love it, love it, love it. So do we... Are you immobile? Cool, wait, I actually like that. We can make that we can make that be decent. Okay, corrupted tree, we can at least get it uh, we can get the benefits from the uh, the health there. We maybe leave them just in the forest then. If they are immobile. Okay, 7, okay. That really is the question. It's like do I want to set up another How do I want to set it up? Are you in a forest? Place of power? Nope. So you can't teleport back here, so that's kind of the nice thing. Steals one attack when attacked? That's pretty rough. I, I think I have to go for a little bit of a buff up here. Not a fan of the Nomad right now. It is a one mana unit, which is nice, but like I don't know where you're gonna move. If, are you gonna move to the bottom left if I do this, or are you gonna move? I'm just gonna trust you. Okay, the tree's gonna do a little bit of work here. 
Okay. Nomad is acting how I'd like. We are going to take a hit from this and die. Okay. Don't love it. This setup seems a little bit less uh, immediately strong than the other one. Yeah, I think leaving them in just for, for the HP would probably be a more reliable more reliable angle. You are definitely going to attack this. If I put a Nomad here, you're just going to standard attack it. And then you're not going to move. That's probably fine. Stalling is... <laughs> you genius. Wait, you can attack and then move. Oh. That's well, still good for us. Uh, we, we end this and then we put down the tree. Absolute genius walking through the swamps. Immovable. Immovable can't even attack on its own. It has to retaliate. Oh, God. That is... It gets worse by the second, man. The good news is we have these, and then they're going to kill the... Uh, kill the battle sorceress. That helps... That does help a lot. But yeah, I think we've got a pretty bad setup here. Oh! Create three gales. On enter, pushes unit in the direction of the wind, inactive until the next wave. Unlockable in the library. Ally of your choice devours all the adjacent allies and gains their stats. Literally useless. I have no unless this unless the unit unit of the shrine can devour it alright for the sake of science what what the hell man I mean like I'm fine with it I'm happy with it but it's also so so strange uh, part of me wants to just put down the nomads just to block a bit. But the fact that we can use that to then gain HP on the shrine, there's some weird mechanics at play that are very generous and also very weird as a result. I'm leaning towards dropping this here just to make it so you can't teleport to my base this turn. So that puts us in a really weird spot. We're going to be taking damage from the Archdruid on this Nomad, theoretically. Oh, shoot. Oh, come on! My base is in a forest! I guess we could, uh, you know, on future runs, we'll know that these guys do that. We'll know that that's kind of like a thing that they do. All right. Interesting. Very, very interesting. So we do get to heal two every turn as well, though. So kill. Nobody's in a forest. Except for, the, except for that. These nomads are wild now. Like, having this clear shot here was really nice, but the thing is, we're not guaranteed to have that. Please attack down. Okay.
Eliminate any unit and deal damage equal to their health to all opposing units. You know what? The thing is, I bet you I could eliminate my shrine. I don't want to. I- Why, man? Why? Oh, my God. All right. Again, that's literally just a body block. I don't want them in on my shrine. Yeah, those abilities... Th this is definitely a meta prog. Uh, yeah. It's a meta progress to win kind of a game. Which is... It's, it's fine. It's fine. It's, it at least... The thing is... I, I'm glad it at least has um, difficulty systems with it. So that as you climb the meta progress stuff, you have somewhere else to go. So it hopefully the the desire is at maximum meta progress and maximum difficulty, you still have trouble. That's my that's my hope. Acquire talents using elemental energies. This is something I wanted to see as well. We didn't get to see this in the last run. The chamber stores the memories of every god that has ever been born in this world. Use energy to learn from them and obtain their powers. Uh, this is the only one I can. Add 4-4 four, four to the first summon ally in each battle. Upon an ally's death, add plus 2 attack to all other allies. This seems... This is so good. <laughs> like, just in general. Oh, and then you can trade. Gotcha. So you can trade... Energy for mana. Gotcha. And for 20, you could buy you could buy another. Coming soon. Gotcha. Interesting, interesting, interesting. There's a lot of really cool ideas here. That like, if you're just somebody who's playing for the sake of just, you know, on your own time and you are not somebody who's bothered by potentially meta progress or things like that, or in fact maybe even likes it, then like, hell yeah, man. I'm going to give this a shot. I don't love it. Okay, they they start out at level 2. They have their they have their ability already which is not good cuz for what I wanted to do. Okay, so I'm going to take damage. You do how much? You do 3. Okay. So there's an arch druid in the first wave but there's not in the second. That probably evens out to being a good idea then. But I have an I have an I have an idea. We'll do that. Okay. Cause with this new passive I think that just spawning a lot of nomads and hoping they kind of do their thing. We might have a really good time here. Yeah, I mean, that's going to be re really annoying. Okay, so there's the buffs. All right. So I kind of wanted to wait to put this down. Don't move down. God. You freaking idiot. So he's gonna die. Maybe that's fine. Maybe that's fine and we'll just use you as a buffer. And we'll have this one be over here who will hopefully get a couple buffs before they die. I don't know. I'm just trying to utilize this passive in an interesting way. If I can. So buff. Buff. I mean, one of them is gonna die anyways. This guy's just this guy's just out of here. He's like, I don't really want to be here anymore, man. Okay. So we got big buffs. That also does uh, buff up this, which is kind of nice. Okay, so you still know to go down. I'm, I'm going to let you die. I know I could I could save that one with training camp, but I think the buffs across the board is kind of interesting. This is a mobile, so it does counterattack for that amount, which is the other element that I think is kind of interesting here that we can play around with.
All right. We'll we'll need to get some action moving in here though. Man, there is a lot of swamps on this map. Well aware that that's a sacrifice. Just trying to keep it in place. So this guy should get buffed up and live this swamp, right? Right. Good. Yeah, this is this is an interesting angle. So you're only level two still, okay. This is an interesting different angle here. I don't know that this is going to go that great because we're not going to move smart. Oh, no. And this guy doesn't move at all? You have no interest in, in escaping the swamp? Okay, you do, but you're going to die. This is so weird. Ah. Uh... So if I out, I do this. I really want to know. We're at 51 minutes here. I want to know if the game really is going to let me devour my forest or my, uh, my shrine. I'm so curious about that. Well, truthfully, what I should do is, is, is I should do that. Because it also means we buff up everybody. My shrine just gained 8 HP and has 27 damage enough to one-shot literally everything that these fools do. So, I, I mean, I don't know, man. That seems like a good enough response to me. Like, accept 14 damage just to instant win seems okay. When we buffed ourselves up by more than that, probably this round. This is so weird! <laughs> Equal to their their health. Okay. You're not even gonna make it, so. But neither are you, are you? Anybody on a forest? Nah, I'm just gonna eliminate you. There's seven or five damage to everybody and then another two damage buff to everybody on my team. This is a neat strategy. Very stupid, but very neat. Uh, again, I kind of just want to stall to buff to everybody else. We are going to get hit probably by you first, maybe? No. Yeah. Understood and expected. He's going to teleport in. <laughs> This is so strange. This is so strange that this is, like, a quasi-valid strategy. Just having all of your stuff eat everything. I will say the sad news is... Oh, no, no, no. We can, uh, we can save you. Because tile effects happen first. Very weird! Okay, good deal. Do want to see, is the boss the same? Seems it. Ah, interesting. Forge, creation into gems. I don't have another one. I think you, I think you need to. My goods and services. Resurrects any units that die here with one health works once per unit. Oh, there's something weird and interesting about that. Uh, on death, all enemies lose one attack. No. On move, adds one. There's the cleric. There's the beast. The beast could actually be a valid kind of counter.
because that guy loves to have higher attack and the beast would theoretically always after the first attack have higher attack so that's kind of nice and then I guess not that it really helped that much but raise the dead could be good And then I'm going to get Light of Hope because we need it to be able to survive a hit from him. So you totally are just... That is just the way you exist. Interesting. Can't help but notice that is a lot of those boneyards that make you a hell of a lot stronger. Can't help but notice there's literally no tiles for my nomads. <laughs> uh, yeah, I really actually don't know what to do here. So we could um, we could claim one of these tiles, forcing him to walk through these, which is kind of nice. And it's on enter if it ha if it's tough. So there's really no downside to building on this. The downside is like it would be nicer to be over here, but look at all of these Talvis Talvius uh, bone yards that they would get. Man, this is. This is the pits, though, because I would love to build in this instead. I guess we could build here. Take over the war graveyard. All right, yeah, we need you to be able to take some hits. I I think that Nomad Strat on this map is not viable in the slightest. Okay. Yeah, this is a, this is a good unit for this. I like that fine. I'm trying to think if I should buff their HP up now or if I wait, and I think I have to wait a little bit. I don't understand their movement pattern there, why they did it that way, but hey. And I understand even less why this is where you want to go. Oh, okay. I don't know if I even bother putting down a Nomad. All right. Here goes. That is, that is a whole thing, huh? Okay. You're going to be making your whole freaking rounds. Okay. I, I really like this, though. I really like that. Uh, I think there's no reason to change anything here. I'm really happy that I get to attack first. I'm really happy that we have the forest situation going on. It's fine. I mean, we knew that was going to happen.
is a little bit weird. I wish I had my scroll for now, too. Tell you what. For the sake of the fact that this is obviously the last uh, fight of the video, let's just go for everything. The fact that we can resurrect the same unit again, even though we technically... Oh. My god. That's really annoying. He, he tunnel visioned in. Well, the good news is if he's tunnel visioned in... Okay, I'll tell you what we actually need to do. Uh, if we sacrifice you here, we buff up everybody on the map by two. <laughs> so that's actually a better use of our turn. Buffing up everyone's attack here. The annoying thing is you're not going to move. Yeah, using that as a as a room wide, we will win this. It's just annoying we weren't able to get in there. That guy's going all the way around. Okay, we've done it with the biggest cheese imaginable. But I guess it's, it's one of those games, I guess, which I do like. I like, we were able to do it, no meta progress. I do like that. Well, eh, not even no meta progress, but not enough to have, no, I can't say that even because those shrine, the, the shrine of that, uh, effects were really game changing. Yeah, we totally needed the meta progress to win that. It just was kind of, uh, needed. But alas, all right. Well, that was the first act there here. Uh, what do we have going on? Consequences. Wise ruler, tyrannical reign, new age. Get a random scroll at the start of every battle. Unused scrolls disappear. Enemies receive three damage each turn, but whenever an ally is summoned next to the shrine, they attack it. Uh, weird. Th that actually could be kind of fun. With the corrupted tree, it could be like an irrelevant way of, of that going about it. Summons an elite guard next to the shrine each battle, but you cannot see the details of events in between each continent. Weird. But alas, 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 that is that. That's going to do it here for today. This has been Godless. It is out now on Steam. There's some really interesting concepts here for sure. I like uh, I like a lot of what's going on. There's a little bit of ham-fisted situation, tiny bugs here and there, things like that, uh, that I'm sure we'll get ironed out over the course of time. The game is early access and will be for about 8 to 10 months. So I'm very, very curious to see what happens in that time uh, and see if there is, I don't know, maybe the possibility of a meta progress list mode is currently kind of like how I've been pitching uh, my suggestion to people because I know that it's such a divisive topic. I personally, in my strategy games, can't stand meta progress because it feels like it kind of defeats the purpose of strategy in general to kind of have it be uh, gated by a grind. But that I understand can some people just like the brain off grindy nature of it. For me, I'd, I'd like to say uh, see a mode where uh, the game is balanced intentionally without the addition of meta progress. Uh, in an action game thing like that, or like a, a arena survival game, like a vampire survivor style game, things like that, it's like, sure, I get it. It's not for me, but it works. I think it can work well in those as like a, a brain off grind it kind of game. When, when it's strategy involved and you're dealing with, you know, situations that will end up being a finite boolean, like you can't complete this because you did not get the right, you know, uh, you did not have the right amount of health yet or whatever, or you don't have the the ritual system unlocked, or you don't start with the meta currency to have the tools to solve this yet. That's where I'm kind of like, I really, I do think it's not good design, but I know other people don't agree. And they're like, yeah, I like that there's forced deaths, things like that here and there. Um, not saying that that's what happened today, more or less, but when those systems are at play, if there's not very careful balance, those situations do exist. I'm not saying that's what happened today, but it can exist, and it could have been what happened today, and things like that. So, I don't know. I don't know. 
a, a, a mode without it would be fantastic. Otherwise, loving it. Very interesting. Fresh, but very familiar at the same time. That's been godless. Uh, but my name is Retromation, covering any games every single day with an extra special theme, roguelikes and roguelites. Check out the channel, roguelikes more every single day, and I'll see you next time. Bye!